Hey guys, welcome to section 4.3. In this section, we'll talk about how to multiply polynomials. Let's get started. This is an exceptionally powerful and useful skill to have. Uh, right now, this is going to seem like, well, this is fairly straightforward, but as we progress through this course, you're going to have to undo everything that we're doing in this section. Meaning, if I ask you to simplify, for instance, uh, this product, all you have to do, first of all, is just multiply the numbers by the numbers and then the corresponding variables together. So I have three and a negative two. So I underline those two because those are quote unquote like terms here. So three times negative two gives me negative six. And then I have an x squared and an x to the negative fourth. And this is where you have to remember the rules very, very specifically. The rule I'm talking about is when you're multiplying, because these two things are being multiplied, and the bases are same. So you have a base of x and you have a base of x. What does one do with the powers? Well, you add them. Hopefully you remember that. So 2 minus 4 would give you negative 2. And then we move to the y's. So I have the same base, a y and a y. And because I'm multiplying, I can add the power. So 3 plus the 6 gives me the 9. And then finally, or maybe not finally, but second to last, I have a P and I have a P. Negative four plus seven gives me a three. And then Q to the 10th does not have a corresponding term here or anywhere else in the problem. So I just write down Q to the 10th as it is. There's nothing else to be done. Next example we have is something like this, three X times the quantity P squared minus Q to the fourth. Now this is, the part that we're going to see again in the future, where as of right now, this is the question. And to answer this and to go in this direction is really quite simple. You can do this whole bunch of different ways. So you can think of this as a distribution of three X into P squared and Q to the fourth, or you can see it as, uh, well, actually that's about it. You can call it different things, but really all you're doing is distribution of three X into P squared minus Q to the fourth. So let's get started. If we have three times one, one is the coefficient of P squared. So I just write the three here. X does not have a corresponding base here. So I just copy the X and P squared. The P does not have a corresponding base here. So the P squared just comes down. Then I have three X times Q to the fourth. And by the same reasoning that I used for P squared, I just simply write down negative three or sorry, minus three X Q to the fourth. What we will need to do in the future is start here and go in the reverse direction. So it's very important to see that when you multiply two terms, you create a product, even though this doesn't look like a product, it looks like a difference. When you multiply three X and P squared minus Q squared, what you're doing is you're creating a product. So imagine you multiply two and three, two times three is six. This in this example is the six. Later on in the course, we will actually be asking you to go back from the six into two times three. That's the hard part. So in order for you to do well in that portion of the course, it's very important that you take what I'm about to say very, very seriously in this section and practice these techniques here. So again, this is just known as distribution. Here's another example of a distribution problem except here, there's a little bit more involved. So if I have to simplify seven P times the quantity two P squared minus P cubed, again, I can distribute the seven P into both terms individually. Seven times two gives me the 14. And here we have a P on the outside and a P as the base on the inside. Because I'm multiplying and the bases are same, I have to add the powers. Now P by itself always has any variable or a number by itself always has a power of one. So imagine there's a one here, one plus two would give us three. That's where this three comes from. If we multiply seven and the negative one, we get negative seven and then P times P to the third or P cubed gives us P to the fourth. One plus three gives us four. And that's it. Now, again, this going from here to here is not the hard part. Most students do this correctly, except for small minor mistakes. 
The hard part is always starting here and going backwards. And that's going to be the subject of, tap, of chapter six entirely. Next thing we need to look at is, so up until now, what we've done is this was a monomial. This was also a monomial. So I multiplied two monomials together. This is a monomial. This is a binomial. So I multiplied a binomial by a binomial. Same thing here, binomial, oh sorry, monomial by a binomial. This is the first example where we see a binomial being multiplied by a binomial. Now, this is the part where most, if not all of you, are going to immediately go to FOIL. And I'm going to urge you to not do that. There's a reason for this. This reason will not become evident until we get to chapter six. But please, 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 if you practice distribution in the following manner, you will have such an easier time seeing this when we do grouping in chapter six that you'll thank me for this later. So if you must foil, you can continue doing that. But I'm telling you right now, if you were to learn how to do it this way or add this extra step in the middle, when we get to grouping, this will not cause any trouble. So let's say we have seven P plus Q as the first binomial and we're multiplying that whole thing by two X minus three Y. That's the second binomial. So we do the exact same thing we did in the previous examples. What we do is term by term multiplication. So seven P is my first term that has to be multiplied by both of these terms. And the way I can indicate that, or I can write it down is seven P times two X minus three Y. And then I have a plus Q. So I put a plus Q here. Now the Q has to get multiplied by both these terms. So I just write down plus Q times two X minus three Y. Most of you, again, if not all of you are going to skip writing this step and do the following. Seven P times two X is 14 X P or P X, which is what we have here. And then seven P times negative three Y is negative 21 P Y. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. But what that does not allow you to see is the mechanics of how we undo this. So in a future section, I will give you this as the problem. And I will ask you to go back to where it came from, which is this. Now, if I just give you this, it's almost it's nearly impossible to start with this and go back to this. And if you can, I'm happy to give you another problem in class and then say in your head, go from here directly to here. However, if you practice putting this term in the middle, this is going to become a super easy problem. And I'll share how to solve this, how to solve going from here to here when we get to chapter six. But please, please, please do me a favor, do yourself a favor and just start writing this term in the middle, which is to say again, seven P times two X minus three Y plus Q times two X minus three Y. Now, when you distribute the seven P into both these terms, like we did in the previous examples, seven P times two X is 14 P X seven times two is 14. And then a P X just comes down seven times negative three is negative 21 P times Y is P Y. And then when we move to the Q Q times two X is two X Q. Now notice I wrote this in the wrong order or in perhaps a different order than the ones I was writing them in. And the reason I did this is to introduce you to the idea that when we multiply two terms, the order in which we write them is irrelevant. It does not matter. And an example of this, or to prove this, imagine you were multiplying three and five. So if you were to write down three times five on a piece of paper, the answer would be 15. Now what happens if you rearrange the terms or you rearrange the way that's written and write it as five times three? Well, five times three is also 15. And that's why Q times X could be written as Q X or it could be written as X Q. It makes no difference whatsoever. And then finally, negative three, uh, sorry, uh, one times negative three gives me a negative three. Q times Y gives me Q Y or Y Q. Now here we see that there are no like terms. And the way we see that is again, we don't care about the coefficients. So we don't care about the numbers being the same we have to have the same variables and the same powers. So even though this term has a P and this term has a P, 
the second variables are not the same. So this one has an X, this one has a Y, so there are no like terms. And here again, these both have Q's, but the second variables are not the same. So they are, these are not like terms either. No like, ter no like terms to combine meaning means that this is our answer. We're done with this problem. Let's look at a perhaps a longer problem. Not a more difficult one, but perhaps something that's slightly more tedious. So we multiply two binomials together. The purpose of this example is to introduce you to the nth case, meaning you can do this for as many terms as you like. You can multiply a polynomial with 10 terms by a polynomial with 10 terms. The procedure remains the same. Nothing changes. It just becomes longer and more annoying, but it does not become more difficult. So if you have 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 times the quantity x to the fourth minus x cubed plus 2x squared, all we have to do is just term by term multiplication. So I take the 3x squared and I have to multiply it by all three terms. And the way I write that is 3x squared times this quantity. Then I write down the negative 2x and that needs to be multiplied by all three terms as well. So negative 2x, all three terms again. And then the 5 comes here, all three terms yet again. Not only does this help us when we get to chapter 6 or help us when we're about to start factoring, it also helps us right now, or it helps us avoid a mistake. Ugh, I gotta start again. It helps us avoid making a mistake as we're solving this problem because all too often, even though this is an easy problem, students tend to forget to multiply every single term by the other. If you write things this way, you're basically breaking down a more complex looking question into something that's far more manageable as three individual parts. So now again, we distribute the three X squared into these three terms. So three times one is just the three X squared times X to the fourth. If bases are same and we're multiplying, we must add the powers. So two plus four is six. Three times negative one is negative three x squared times x cubed gives us x to the fifth. Bases are same and we're multiplying. So we add the exponents. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 times 2 is 6. So I put a 6 there. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. So I get x to the fourth. Now here we have to be a little more careful because up until now we were mostly just distributing positive terms. When we distribute a negative, we have to worry about this, or we have to remember to account for this negative sign as well. So negative two times one gives me negative two. X times X to the fourth gives me an X to the fifth. Negative two times negative one gives me a positive two. X times X to the third yields X to the fourth. And then negative two times two gives me a negative four. X times X squared gives an x to the third. Again, we're adding the exponents because the bases are the same and we're multiplying. Remember both conditions. Finally, the five should be relatively simpler because there's no variable here. So five times x to the fourth is just five x to the fourth. Five times negative x cubed is just negative five x cubed. Five times two x squared is just 10 x squared. And again, now that there are no parentheses left over, we just combine like terms. The reason we didn't do that here is because there were no like terms to combine. The variables were different and the base or yeah, the, the bases were different because the variables were all different. Here, we do have the same variable in all the terms, but the powers are not the same. So we can only combine like terms, which again, hopefully you remember is same base and same power. So I start with the largest three X to the sixth, six as the largest exponent. And I look across my problem. I don't have any other X to the sixes. So I just copy this down. This is a lone term. Then I look at X to the fifth. I have one here. I have another, so I have a negative three and negative two. That's negative five and I have no others. So I get negative five X to the fifth. Then I have six X to the fourth, X to the fourth, X to the fourth, six plus two is eight. And then I have another five X to the fours. Uh, so eight plus five is 13. So I have 13 X to the fourth. 
Next we look at cubes. So I have no cube, no cube, no cube. That's my first cube, and then that's another cube. So negative 4x cubed minus 5x cubed gives me negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. So negative 9x cubed. And then finally, squares, there's none except for this very last term. So that just kind of gets copied down. There's nothing else to be done or nothing else we can combine with this. So again, just to give you a preview of what's coming up, in, the, in chapter 6, you'll be asked to start at this stage and go backwards to this. That is only possible if you have this intermediate step in the middle. Without this intermediate step, that's not possible. In most cases, I would say 99% of students that don't learn to do this here don't automatically or magically just figure out how to do this in chapter six, which is factoring. So please, please, please do me a favor, do yourself a favor, learn to do things this way. And when you start writing this down, it's not a different way of foiling. It's literally the same thing. If you were to foil this out, you would get three X squared times X to the fourth which is 3x to the sixth. You're skipping this step, or you're skipping writing this step down, but in doing so, you're not seeing the link or the bridge to go back. So hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out.